Topic five, who will we follow? Has the rise in personally branded journalists like Nate Silver and Ezra Klein reached its peak? On the other hand, do mass market publications like USA Today and Time still have life in them? Well, if you travel on an airplane, I guess USA Today still does. <laughs> uh, Time Magazine, absolutely not. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, I liked Nate Silver when he was in the New York Times. Mm, I, yeah. I didn't, once again, he lost me when he left mm. there. I mean, I still, every now and then, check, check out his blog or something, but I, I, I'm not in rhythm with him. I'm not really, you know. Well, well, you know, Nate Silver and Ezra Klein were both subjected to some measure of derision when their new site started because they, they weren't as good as their, their fans had hoped they would be. But I have to say, I don't think that Nate Silver's having a huge impact at this point, but Ezra Klein does seem to be building something interesting. There, there's worthwhile stuff reading on Vox all the time, and it's far from being just him. He's hmm. built up a pretty good staff. I mean, there's been a lot of very worthwhile questions about how diverse that staff is. Yeah. Uh, but they're, you know, they're doing some good hmm. work, and I think they're starting to get some attention. I, I think I'm one of the obvious people. I don't go to his site, but the stuff gets sent through various right. people, sure. so I see the content. But that's right. what they want. Yeah. I know yeah. they want. Nobody yeah. goes to this site. I know. Well, I'm just saying. I, I, think, the, I think the idea of personally branded journalism was, in large part, uh, an invention of media writers who needed the hook to talk about a, a few different disparate <laughs> projects. I mean, oh, so Vox and, five, Vox and <laughs> yeah, a media writer says that. Vox and 538 have really had very different years, and I think 538 is, has, has struggled, has not really achieved much in, as much in the way of audience, and has been criticized for its content. Um, Vox has become a pretty substantial success in terms of audience and, and advertising deals. And it's also, I don't think of it as Ezra Klein's site. It, yes, a, I true. mean, that's he right. was only one of the founders of it, and I don't think that his voice editorially dominates the, 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 the space. And it's part of a larger company that is, really knows what they're doing, Vox Media. Uh, I think that on the mainstream question, you know, time has really reinvented itself, tried to reinvent itself, and sort of in the model of a more socially oriented Huffington Post of a few years ago. Very buzzy, very, very, very socially oriented, all about trying to get traffic. They've had some success at that. Whether or not that lines up with the, the print magazine they put out every week is a different question. Just a couple points. I, I don't want to stay too long on this, but I remember when Vox was preparing to be launched, Ezra Klein talking about how it was going to be this sort of radical redefinition of yes. what journalism is and yeah. what journalism can achieve. And it's not that. It's there's some good stuff on it. It's a blog, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's some it's smart people writing for it, and they make some good points. But it's not this sort of you know incredible innovation that he had promised. About Nate Silver, um, I did not follow Nate Silver from the Times to, uh, to his new site either, in large part because I don't like the brand he's now affiliated. With. In that case, mm -hmm. my sort of uh, fondness or lack of fondness for the brand he's affiliated with trump my loyalty to that individual. ESPN? Yeah. Well, uh -huh. ESPN, and, and he's uh, very intimately connected with Grantland, right? Uh, well, they're well, sort of they're, they're both so there is, yeah. Well, but isn't there, I thought there was more of an affinity that maybe I'm wrong. Do you think we'll see more sort of these branded journalists like, you know, Julian Assange or Len Greenwald, people who, you know, basically are one note people, but they create something well, around them. I don't want to. I don't want to leave something that Josh said, which I hadn't thought about. I don't think of it as Ezra Klein's site anymore. It was all made out to be. That's how it started. Yeah. And now I don't even think about him when you say Vox. Yeah. So which it's would, about the content again. Which would kind yeah. of argue yeah. against exactly. the personal brand mm. being yeah. that big a deal yeah. moving forward. Unless the personal brand is something like what Julian Assange and... Uh, the, the, the key thing here is that it's so said. much cheaper yeah. to start a news organization now than it was yeah. at any point in you know the 20th century. Um, you know, you can start very small, you can start fast. Vox.com from the day that, they, that Ezra Klein was hired to launch was nine weeks. Right. A really rapid process that can, that you know, people who understand how to publish on online, they, they, mm -hmm. they're quite good at it. So I think you're going to see more startups and more people trying things, and it makes sense that some of those would be based on the personality and the audience that one individual person has built up. But it won't necessarily keep you there. Right. What about yes. the mass market, USA Today, Time? I think if the, the piece is good enough, or if the content is good enough, then you'll read it. The best piece I read, single best piece I read about the Boston mayor's race in 2013 was this piece that Paul McMorrow, who oh, yeah. writes for Commonwealth Magazine and also contributes to The Globe, he wrote a terrific synopsis of the Boston mayor's race for Time.com. I emailed it to people. I said, check this out. This is fabulous. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if, if, uh, if the content is good, uh, you will find you it. Find but it. I, I also would say I'm not going to sort of, I never reach for a time. Uh, my mother's been trying to get me to read yeah. the week for ages. The week I never, yeah. the that's week what I hear, good. but I never read the week. But I think USA Today is good. That's what I say today is good, I have to say. No more mass audiences. What's the saying in the future? 
on the internet, we'll all be famous to 50. All right, people. we will see if some of our prognostications yeah. become true. Adam Riley, thanks so much. Josh Benton, Kelly Crossley, Dan Kennedy. All right, that is our show. A reminder, you can find this entire episode and catch up on past shows online at beatthepress.org.